Rob, hey, we about to get ready to get it cracking, y'all. Let's run that intro. Give them time to get in here. We we lit. And the ancestors are looking out for us. Todd Hayes is exposing them, man. It's okay, you see that chair right there? See how big it is? Yeah. Now look at the poke chair under. Scroll down. Look at the poke chair. Under. Never yeah. have it been made yeah. so good. Young TV. Running the game right now. Young TV. Time to take over. Young TV. We the hottest in the game. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you just not Young too late. TV. Share like on your Instagram, Facebook. Young Broadcasting Yo. live from 2030, baby. Uh-huh. Yo. Yo. Taking over the game, baby. Oh, yeah. Yo. Hit that light. Likes up in the air, you heard me? Yo, TV. Ride by. Hotel. It's long. Yo, TV. Assalamu alaikum. Flow lesson. Yo, TV. Hit that like. Hey, y'all. We lit. We live with Chief Pontiac in the building. <laughs> but to go in on some uh everybody was uh interested in this topic raw they was like oh yeah i like this because it's like uh about having positive people around you and different uh perspectives of that thing so everybody wanted to uh they like this class so we wanted to hear what you got on that you said you had a public service announcement you wanted to make as well yeah the public uh, service announcement go first because you got to be able to clip it out later and make it into a short okay that's right that's right go ahead Okay, so the public service announcement, and this is the information notice to the clans of the land. All clans um, being notified by um, timestamp, archive, and datable format. Okay, so the public, I had a meeting today. This was the meeting of all meetings. This is where the alpha meet the omega, as in the alpha male meets the omega mother mm -hmm. okay so remember i told y'all july the 4th 2019 the contract expired we got 72 hours to respond mm -hmm. on july the 6th 2019 i issued a public notice to exercise the blood and the right for all of the tribes to be restored to prior um conditions based on the blood and the right to restore the matriarchy now when i make this public notice one of the matriarchs is going to be called to go collect a very key piece of do a document and it's the what we call original alloidal title issued to the rothschild family under the banking corporate jurisdiction operating under uniform commercial code in admiralty and maritime law right so on july the 19th 2019 right um empress uh rare bird the uh, chiefess on the land was called she had the first stop in egypt i gotta make this clear because if they don't go through Egypt before they go to Europe, they sending them in the wrong direction, right? So we went over a lot of paperwork. Within that paperwork, um, 
Dr. Malachi Z. York's name is part of the alloidal title um, complaint and recovery, right? So we have to just put it in the public domain that the alloidal title and the holder of the alloidal title from the land with a direct matriarchal descent to the original bloodline has contacted me to close everything out. It's a wrap. Nothing else to do after this. We, there will be no 2024 elections. The banks are on the verge of closing. They will be closing at any moment without notice. When it happens, none of the tribes is to panic because that's why you had to remove the panic from the equation. Exit stage left, brother, panic. So it's an ancestral order that came through the bloodline of the matriarchs to recover the alloidal title held by the enemies who came in as the uh, Scottish Rite Freemasonic order. They have now all of these, um, everything traces back to a single document and that's what you call a cornerstone in masonry. And redemption of the cornerstone is the setting of the capstone. It's a royal art degree. Red house, blue house meet in the middle. And it's the purple light in the Fiat Lux. All of the key points of the light have been located, which is the light codes of the DNA. Right. So now what we're going to be doing is watching the last closing of the corporate entity formerly known as the United States of America in the recovery of the land by the organic in inherited right of the land of the matriarchy in the restoration of the matriarchs. We will be assembling 72 elder sisters as the lawgivers of the land. And from there, all of the chiefs have to come and show their part in the work to those elders so that we will know how to best remedy the brainwashing done to our people and to restore them and love them back into the circle. This all going to carry us for the next seven generations into what we know as the golden age. This is the closing of all contracts and the notice the agent is notice the principal. But the only people we need to notify is us that we back in the driver's seat. Right. The beginning has met its end. Now we begin again with a new day. So they can take it for what they want. They can accept it or don't accept it. They can debate it. They can argue it. But it's going to be revealed that the matriarchs is back in, um, in effect, that none of the corporate jurisdiction is any longer functional on the land. Right? So law enforcement, um, court systems will be systematically closed and they will be replaced with the National Guard until such time as the tribes understand how to reclaim and recontrol their local neighborhoods. In other words, until the tribes is reset, we're going to use military people born here to govern us over here. Right? When the banks open back up, this is when everybody's going to get their payout. Okay, notice they notice the principle, all tribes on notice. All right, that's the public service announcement. So now we can now we can go to class. Uh, hey, we got a quick question before we go to that because on that what you were talking about. Now they said some about what about the digital dollar? Like so it's gonna come back as still paper money, big mama's money, or uh, digital dollar. Look, Elder, I don't personally care. But whatever it is, is going to be backed by substance. There will be no more fiat. There will be no more credit system. Credit is gone. Credit, that is slavery. We abolishing all slave-related enterprise. 
Right. So whatever form the currency return as, we got to do buyback for the fiat money so that the people don't incur great loss. And then the rightful heirs and their descendants will be notified as to how to recover their family's shit back, basically. We want our shit back. We don't need reparations. That's a distraction. This is bigger than reparations. This is the return of your rightful inheritance to the earth. In all things produced out of earth, the earth born is to receive birth first benefit. Period. That's it. All right. Well, I guess that answers the question uh, for the brother that had that question about the uh, digital currency. Now we can get into the class, man. Uh, mm -hmm. People surrounding you. Yeah, because uh, I did a little research on that because I never heard of that, this word before you said it, uh, told me about it. And then I did a little mm -hmm. research on it. Yeah, about the people around you. Hey, so go ahead. Hey, just go ahead. Go ahead. I'm gonna mute my thing because I got like a little beat going on in the background, so I'm gonna be muted out. But if you, if you say something, okay. So uh, we're gonna start with the first picture of the man with his aura. Okay, I got you right now. Let me share that. Boom, 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 boom. All right, it's gonna be in this folder right here. Can you see my screen? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, need to cut that damn beef off. Okay, okay, okay. Which one is it? Uh, said so the one with the deuce with his aura surrounding him. But yeah, the single so individual. Would it be this one or the? That that's good right there. Hey y'all, Rob out. Peace, family. Hit that, hit that like button, y'all. If you're new to the channel, you know we known for cracking heads and twisting caps. So we're doing a ball cap disclaimer right now. Make sure you get your hard hat in the building. We got Skype Ape at the North Gate. When you knock, we with a bump scrape. All right, here we go, uh, Rob. Okay, so what you're looking at is the auric field around each individual um using curly in photography um this is what you would be looking at the shape mm -hmm. of the grid around it right that's called the torsion field or a torus field mm -hmm. okay so you notice in the middle there's a smaller representation of the bigger one yeah because you you operate from two distinct energies love and fear mm -hmm. fear is your animal instinct love is your divine inheritance mm -hmm. love is the first principle so it's always going to consume the base instinct mm -hmm. and you see in the middle you'll see the heart with the red around it mm -hmm. right so <clears throat> the earth is also has the auric field that's a torsion field just like this mm -hmm. right now go to the one where okay wait a minute while you thinking and going through your studies this is the mind matrix that you are in as an individual mm -hmm. right now let's go to the one with the two people and the aura this one yeah now if you look when they right. interact right now you notice it looked like it's three humps going across the top these are mm -hmm. two auras coming together and this is creating the third entity of mind mm -hmm. right the, so now when you're thinking, you covering all of that area, right? Yep. Now, this is the male-female heart-to-heart link, which gives you your point of balance and counterbalance. Uh -huh. The woman is operating from mitochondrial. The man is operating from the Y chromosome. Okay. She's the X, he's the Y. 
These are the two unknown variables in algebra, the X and the Y. Because when you bring them together, alpha meets omega, you create another entity or egregore, which goes into the definition of the word. If we go to Google and type in the word, we we'll to do that. Elder, yeah. Type the word in on Google so they can see the definition of what an egregore is. I got you. I'm always gonna do whatever you gonna load up for me. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. What the fuck is it doing? Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, Rob, our family, peace, peace. If you come into the building, hit that like, hit that subscribe button, share and like. Let everybody know we live and lit with Skype Ape at the North Gate. We about to you say puts and caps <laughs> and cracking heads. <laughs> <laughs> we got them on. We got them on the ropes right now, Rob. We got them on the ropes. We got them on the ropes. Outstandingly bad, shocking. Is that right? That's egregious. That's not egregore. Oh, shit. Hold up. My bad. That's the last part. There we go. Oh, yeah, I read this earlier. Okay, all right. Is an esoteric concept representing a non physical entity that arises from the co collective thought of a distant group of people? Okay, now yeah, type in right. law of success in 16 lessons because this is where you get a description of how the egregore can work for a group of people, whether they know it or don't know it. It's called the mastermind group. So it's in this, it's in this book. Take out the uh, egregore part. What's the name of that book you said again? Law of Success. Oh, I got it. Here we go, right here. Okay, so this is the book I'm going to be quoting from. I'm going to show y'all what. <clears throat> this book right here. Napoleon Hill? I heard that. Yeah. I heard that author before. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, this is a, a book that you would get if you was trying to learn how to be an entrepreneur and um, build from the ground up a successful enterprise. Whatever it is, it don't matter. This is the keys to success. But one of the 16 uh, lessons, number three, is called The Mastermind how it is created through harmony of purpose and effort between two or more people, right? So we're talking about an egregore or a thought form, right? So in your Bible, it says, like when two or more come together in my name, there I am also, right? <clears throat> so in the hologram, every part of the hologram holds the information of the whole hologram. When you take a piece of the hologram, you can see the whole of the hologram from that one piece. This is what we're talking about in the, in the mind format. So the law of success in 16 lesson, lesson three is the mastermind, how to establish a mastermind group. This goes back to the matriarchal tradition of um, when they say the best person for the job is the one supposed to do the job. The one who is qualified to teach is obligated to teach. Your qualifications don't come from your bachelor's degree or your PhD. Your qualifications come from what do you actually know 
and what you can actually prove. So mm-hmm. when we're talking about creating the mastermind group, the quality of the people that you put in determines the nature of the egregore or the thought form. Now, mm-hmm. let's go to a uh, type in Gus type in the crowd, Gustave Lebon. This is another book. This is the book on sociology um, that tells you how the crowd or the egregore operates, right? So these is just reference for y'all to understand what I'm talking about as we go deeper into the topic. C-R-O-W-D, the crowd. C-R-O. What's the name of it? The, the uh, author? Just type in L-E-B-O-N. That's his last name. It should come up. Uh, right here? You see right here, Rod? Hold on. It didn't came up on my screen yet. Can you see the author? Yeah, that's it. This book right here tells you when you get a group of people together that they get swept up in the thought form that the group of people create. Right? So this is what we're talking about when we talk talking about an egregore. So it's the energy of a group of people taking on a mind of his own separate from any one of the individuals in the group. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the universal mind, right? The universal mind is the egregore that all humans that ever exist or will exist creates that gives us what we call reality. The collective egregore of all humans that ever existed and ever will exist is called the universal mind. This is the uh, Akashic record or the sacred hall of records. This is where prophets get future predictions that's accurate. And this is where um, historians be able to read between what's given to know what actually took place because the egregore can show you the difference between the false information and the real information and then you'll be able to go find references to point people to understand what the universal mind is saying and these what we call our thought leaders of the day right so our culture is created by the thought leaders of the era that changes as different individuals with different experiences come to the forefront in the society what we call the rise and fall of leadership right so now we coming from under old babylonian um, sacred rites that we call sin rites, which made everybody be a sinner because this is what's driving the universal egregore. Individuals within the egregore, the universal mind, is obligated to teach themselves to override what the common concepts and ideas is in order to be able to read what the universal egregore is telling them right so when the universal egregore is going to come to a singularity all thought forms converge we call it um uh the collapsing of the quantum realm it all going to come to a singularity Mm -hmm. go back to the movie the highlander remember their motto was in the end there can be only one right Right now, in the cultures around the world, they tell you about it. In Africa, it's the flaming spear. 
Mm -hmm. In the Americas, it's the golden arrow. In Asia, it's the staff or that um, the monkey king swings. Right. Right. But it's all the significance of the driver of the egregore has to be the one who has acquired the most understanding of all conditions that we face with and the remedies as well. So that means that you can't just come see the problem and to identify the problem and be the one without a solution. Mm -hmm. Right? All of the earth eels fall under the patriarchy right now. So the remedy is to restore the matriarchy, right? No, would you at least say uplift fallen humanity? Mm -hmm. Right? Fallen humanity is who? The great mother. What mm -hmm. do you mean? The throne of the Pope has been undermined or the throne of Big Mama by the Pope. Right? Right. So if the Pope is sitting under Big Mama's seat, he becomes what we call Jacob. Okay. Yaku. Yaka. Right? So the it becomes a verb. We watching them do it. But now we have to make them undo it. We have to reverse engineer the problem by presenting the solutions to the problem at every step of the way. This is what you call the cleansing of the great egregore. As we move to a singularity, people start to understand the information better because the vibration of the chosen ones and the light codes, the light codes are the keys to touch in a person's mind to wake them up from their slumber. Basically, you setting their alarm clock off, their mm -hmm. internal alarm clock, mm -hmm. right? which takes us back from mortality to immortality because mortality is perceived during the sleep state when you awake, mm -hmm. but the immortality is perceived through the awakened state state because you sleep, right? Mirror effect mm -hmm. as above, so below flipping the Lucifer lens, mm -hmm. right? So just like you, think that the brain is the mind, but the brain is just the capacitor or the hardware to download the information that you call mind. Mm -hmm. Right? So now we need a translator of the universal mind that can speak it in the common language of the people that's supposed to drive the egregore, the 5%, the poor righteous teachers. Right? So we looking at flipping mirrors mm -hmm. while uh, the nation of 5% was founded in New York by Father God Putin, Clans 13X, the Red House was rising off the brother out there in California who was a Piru and his name was Putin, mm -hmm. right? So he's reflecting what's coming from the East in the West, right? Now the West reflect back off the blue house of what's being written in New York, black and gold off the great son or the great father, Allah, Clarence 13 X, who's reflecting Chicago, right? Which is Elijah Muhammad, which is telling us that the great mother is the one who can clearly see Muhammad, the praiseworthy, right? Mm -hmm. You can't clearly see Muhammad until you've paid the fard. The fard is the wage. And the image of the picture that you are given is a mirror image telling you to study your way out and use the mirrors to see what I'm telling you, which mm -hmm. takes us from Chicago back to Detroit. 313 equals seven. This is the master city and the master not. Mm -hmm. The seven is circle, but there's four breaks, north, south, east, and west. And in come the one that's the bearer of the news, mm -hmm. right? The news is the information that's being referred to the five poor righteous teachers that it's time for all tribes to arise and return back to your original self. Go mm -hmm. back to yourself, accept your own, and be yourself, right? 
So now all of the tribes can trace back to the 313, the um, temple number one more saying, I mean, uh, nation of Islam was established across town, east side, west side, to the shrine of the Black Madonna, Albert Cleese, mm -hmm. right? So now we got the shrine, Blue House, across from the Red House Nation. Now it's the flip. Mm -hmm. The one from the Blue House, the seventh son, is to come out and point to the Red House to determine the mother line is the bloodline and tell y'all that Claire Muhammad was big mama until she passed it on. Hmm. Right? You hmm. gotta always leave a successor for your work. Hmm. I inherited the war chief, Chief Pontiac, Ottawa war chief's work based on the blood and the right. Hmm. This all traced back on the bloodlines, hmm. right? So the universal mind is waking us up collectively in order to reclaim what's ours. So now we got to shut down the slumber, which is shutting the matrix off, mm -hmm. right? The last two things is to close their banks. Now, in the public service announcement, the sister directly got the um, um, alloidio title straight from the Rothschilds, who was the holders. Mm -hmm. Right, they was left to protect mm -hmm. the blood right. Rothschild mean blood mm -hmm. shield. They can only give it to the rightful heir, right? So in the universal egregore, the collective unconscious of the collective of the people, we can go there and find that all information is available to us. We no longer need the teacher, we need to become God, mm -hmm. right? The God self is the self that know all things. This is a new understanding of the old paradigm. We did this before and we'll do it again in another 25,000 years. Right. Right. So closing out the age is finally complete when we find the um, matriarch, the blood matriarch recipient of the um, alloidio title. This is all driving we in the driver's seat of the great egregore now. Hmm. Right? Hmm. So you see that all of the chiefs is working in for a common purpose, but they're working in what looked like a different direction. Right? Because they all got a different function to feel. If everybody did the same thing, we would never get out of the condition that we don't like. Right? So... In order to get out of the chapter of misery, misery is caused by fear. The side of the physical manifestation of fear is called pain. Right? And love heals all things. Right? Because the love of the ones driving the egregore is what changes the universal mind. The changing of the universal mind is represented by the individual who don't take sides and he can see all things. Therefore, he can say whose mind need to be changed. But you can't tell the individual because the individual is a sub product of the whole. The individual got to come to their own conclusion to receive their own awakening of the self, which is the inner God in you. So we become master knockers as students trying to find our way out of this egregore, right? And the only way out is to go deeper within. You have to go to the subconscious of the egregore or what we call the sacred halls of Amenti, the unknown land, right? And the sacred halls of Amenti is where the sun go at sunset. It's all pair uh metaphors right and meta is a, a bite of information it's less than a bite of information right so by giving it in the metaverse right in the smaller verse then it reflects the egregore in what we call the omniverse or the universal mind the great egregore 
right? Let's go back to the uh to to the slides. I'm gonna pull up another receipt to show him. I got you. I got you. Hey, shout out my brother Mark Cooper, man, and family. Right? Shout out my brother Randy Christian. Uh, here we go right here. Okay, we got that. Boom, boom. All right, boom. Back to the slides. Hey, y'all, hit that like. We got like 600 people in here. Hit that like right now. Let them know we own. Let them know Skype at the North Gate. And when we knocking right now, we doing some knocking right now. You know what I'm saying? Head knocking and cap pillin and cap twisting. Okay, to see the colorful picture oh, that was coming up next. Bro, you may, may want this. I'm going on. Shout out my people in Atlanta. The one Shout you got the curse. Uh, right here, right? It's the one to the right of that picture. Y'all, yeah, it's a big storm coming to Atlanta. Okay, I'm going to go back to it right now as soon as it load up i'll be able to slide it over hey y'all hit that like hit that subscribe button okay let's go there we go right there mm -hmm. that one right there rod no nah, go the other way it was in the whole slide it was next to that there you yeah. go yeah okay now when we look at different uh, people using curly in photography, can you make that a little bigger? Okay, this is what you would look like if you see three people together. Right? Okay. I'm finna show you us building a great egregore or universal mind. It's just three random people walking down the street under curly in photography you notice that each person's color code is different right yeah. that's because they operating from a different chakra but they still inside of their own auric field right right so when you see this these people overlapping okay in the energy signature um these people would be in what's known as Metatron's cube, the auric field, in the energetic signature when they balance. Uh -huh. When you imbalance, it'll stay like this. Uh -huh. Right? Go to the one with the picture of the man standing in what looked like a six-point star. Okay. Send me that one with the six point star. No, I'm trying. Okay. Let me look. Hold on. I don't see that one. Okay, let's go to Tahuti with the uh, holding the star life. Okay. Let's, let's, let's make that one bigger. I got Okay, now you see in a in a one D form or two D form, this would be a six point star, but it's drawn where you can see is three D um, imagery, upright triangle, downward facing triangle, right. which means as above, so below. Right, this is called right. the star life. Now put a circle around that, and that's the individual's auric field. Right? right now, this picture to who he holds in the star of life in the right hand. This is the key to understanding the universe when you understand right. the self as this piece right here. Right, right, okay. Uh, go out and I tell you the next picture so I can see them all, and I tell you what picture to pull up next. Go to uh. Go to the bottom picture far right. And we just gonna start going through the rest of the slides in order. Uh, I
I got you. Okay, blow the picture up. I'm more concerned with the picture image than I am with the words. Okay, that's good. The part right here, this is the Freudian um, description of the conscious mind and the unconscious mind. Everything that you are aware that you think is above the waterline. You got that? Everything that you think yeah. that you're aware of is above the waterline, right? That's the conscious mind. That means that's the part of the mind you're aware of. That means the unconscious mind is everything that you are not aware of that's taking place below the waterline. Right. Right. Now, notice that the iceberg is in the water. Water is symbolic for spirit. Right. The solidified spirit is the expression of the physical reality. Right? So this is the individual seen as a spirit entity as a block of ice. Every time you go to sleep, you go below the waterline. Go ahead. Right? And when you wake up, you bring you come back above the waterline. This is why they say we was in the Piscean age, everything was underwater, but we're going into the Aquarian age, the air sign. When the cold air hits the water, it forms the ice. Right? Oh, yeah. So now everything you are aware of has a counterpart that's deeper than you think below what you are aware of. Ahead, right. Dude. So this is called tapping into the universal mind. When you go into a hypnagogic state, you are where your eyes are parallel to the waterline. Mm -hmm. You neither woke nor you sleep. You just at the waterline. In order for you to go below the water, you have the propensity to close your eyes. Right. When you close your eyes, it appears everything went dark. But when you get underwater and you open them, you see a different reality than you saw, but it looks similar to the one you saw when you was awake. Right? Let's go to the next slide. The conscious and the conscious, unconscious, and super conscious mind. Now, we just seen the conscious in the subconscious or the unconscious. Now we're going into the super conscious, right? So this is a reference book to help y'all get deeper understanding of what I'm saying. The super conscious mind is the great egregore. The great egregore is all of the unconscious or subconscious minds being linked together as one, right? Next slide. Okay, this is another um, another way of looking at the same thing. When they say pre-conscious mind, that means while you are waking up or while you are going to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's only pre-conscious when you're coming from unconscious to conscious. When you go any other way, it's post-conscious or unconscious, right? Unconscious mind is where you're going. So that's the barrier in the middle, what they call the barrier of no pass or the barrier of fear. Everything you fear is then that part we call the pre-conscious because you haven't realized the universal mind that you can only realize unconsciously. Right? So now, let's go to the next one. Right. There we go, flower of life. Now, when we've seen all of them people overlapping, this is what the earth is doing now with the matriarchs. It's creating this, this flower of life in matriarchs aware around the world, right? All of them mm -hmm. together forms what we, they are a Tesla coil or a mitochondrial um, 
connected web around the earth. Right? This was what it would look like when all of the auras start overlapping around the earth. You get the flower of life. Let's read the description under it, Elder. A series of overlapping circles. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Finish reading. A series of overlapping circles that can build infinite outward forming a flower-like grid. All geometric forms can be found within it. It damn my phone did. It is used as a blueprint for most complex scarce ge geometry shapes. Sacred geometry shapes. Like Metrotron cubes and Merica box symbolism creative creation and remind us of the unity of everything we're all built from the same blueprint okay now it says in the second one that the blueprint for more complex sacred geometry shapes like metatron's cube and macabre the macabre is what it looked like um as the the one that thoth is holding in his hand metatron's mm -hmm. cube is the uh Merkaba of the earth right that's mm -hmm. the difference of the difference the earth got its own Merkaba, but we inside of the earth Merkaba, right and um the earth Merkaba is metatron's cube because it's the collection of all the macabas on the earth Okay, so this is the Metatron's cube. See the like six point star? That's this is the two dimensional representation of it. All right. But it's the same symbol. This is just the one that belongs to the earth. So you see it's okay. It's seven key circles in this one. Because you got one in the middle. And you got six around the outside. Yep, that's right. Okay, you got G is the seven letter made, and G is the yep. letter in the middle. You also see in there, you see what's known as the compass in the square mm -hmm. of the Masonic Lodge. Right? That's because the Masonic Lodge was the original okay. rites of passage prior to infiltration. Once they was infiltrated, they became subjected to the misinformation. Right, which brought us to morals and dogma. Right, so let's go back to the ones we got already. Go to the next one. Okay, now this is what we call the auric field. Each color is representative of uh, which chakra it would be vibrating the highest in frequency when you are stuck in your root chakra you stuck in base desire when you reach your crown chakra you have liberated yourself from all of the ones in the lower three chakras and you free yourself into the universal mind the great egregore the great thought form mm -hmm. the third eye you can see it the throat chakra you can explain it the heart chakra you can feel it the crown chakra, you just know it, right? The crown chakra activation is also what we call the royal arc degree. The root mm -hmm. chakra is your, is your building stone, your cornerstone, because all, um, all other chakras begin with the activation of a root chakra. The root mm -hmm. chakra is first activated up on your final determination of gender. Right, and the enemy was converting the children by altering the root chakra in early childhood development, which throws off the development of every other chakra after. Mm -hmm. Right, 
which confuses the ones within their own auric field. The only way to find liberation is to become aware of the trauma in the root chakra mm -hmm. that keeps you trapped in the lower three chakras and you can't control your appetite. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, this is another uh, book, I believe, uh, that's showing you. So I, I sent him this picture because all of these people in the back is forming this egregore in the front and they are unaware that they're doing it, mm -hmm. right? But that's just the art for the, for the imagery to understand how it works. So you got egregores, mobs, and demons. Mm -hmm. uh, a ma malevolent thought form is called a demon, mm -hmm. right? When you purify your ego, you can see the thought form or the error in the thought clearly, mm -hmm. right? This is what they call in Dianetics um, the engram, mm -hmm. which is an implanted thought that's supposed to take you away from your realization of the self right in the great egregore and mobs is an egregore that's being controlled by the lower instincts of survival and fear this is what give you riots the difference mm -hmm. between a riot and the march is the control of the egregore at the base level right mm -hmm. so let's go to the next one I want to try to get to all of these uh, before we just go into Q&A. So this is another explanation that'll help you understand it better, right? This is the different types of people that make up an egregore, right? So you start from the bottom and it say egregorial idlers. These are people fascinated by various ideas spend a lot of time for each devotion or what we call devotees. Then you got egregorial puppets. People fulfill the complex and supported in life by egregore idea as compensator, a kind of sectarian. These are the ones, this is where divide and conquer is played at on this energy level of the egregore. Mm -hmm. Then you got egregorial leaders, priests at the top of the egregorial pyramid and obtaining feeding from the egregore. They vary due to variation of egregorial dynamics. In other words, when the great mind is trying to do something, these priests is the ones that's manipulating the ones on the next level down. Wow. But it doesn't work on the ones that's called idlers because they born locked into a devotion. They can't escape as a birthright. Wow. And this is why the strongest ones stay at the bottom the longest. Okay, then the next one up is person of egregore mass. Common persons ridden by the influence of many egregores and led by them. His thinking varies moderately since the influence of differently oriented egregores is mutually compensated. This is your 80%. These are the ones that um, the egregorial leaders can lead from be being of a lower station than them they can still be led by the infiltration of artificial egregores created by the egregorial puppets. Wow. Right? Now you got what's called your super egregorial players. These are what you would call the gods of the earth. Shielded from egregores, people created egregore controlled only by their will or intention. Now, when you at this level, you can see all the way to the bottom. That's the poor righteous teachers you're trying to reach. Right. The devotees at the very bottom is the strongest. They the ones least likely to interfere with any other bullshit 
But when they see it and they know that the super agrigorial players is exposing the frauds in the middle, they begin to stand up. And those are the ones we call the Braves. Right. And the ones who is identifying the frauds is the ones we call the true leaders. The leaders that carry the true light. Sound familiar, Elder? Yeah. Right. The true light is the light of love, which is the green light, Sufi order, Amaj Sapaps, a.k.a. Malachi Z. New York. Mm -hmm. Right? So, when Bible was telling us about the book, The Mind, you ever notice that the cover of that book is green? Go ahead. I ain't never, I ain't never think about that. Yeah, the original publication paperback, it had, a, I think, that same symbol behind your head on it, and it said, The Mind. That's it. So what he was telling us is if we're going to stay at the bottom, right, make the ones in the middle do what's right first or become the ones at the top. There's only two options. If you're going to if you're going to get the people on the understanding of what's taking place, you either got to take out the ones in the middle. The, the priest is the ones waging the war against the agrigorial idlers, the poor righteous teachers. Mm -hmm. And we the ones trying to tell the poor righteous teachers it's time for us to take what's ours. That's right. No retreat, no send, no surrender. We not backing down and we not giving up. And the only way to lose is to surrender your birthright or abandon your birthright. Mm -hmm. You abandoning your birthright by fleeing your homeland. Right? You surrender by being perfectly aware of your birthright, but telling somebody else that you came from somewhere else so that you don't have to deal with the conflict of receiving what's rightfully yours. Right. Right. So as uh, the minister would say, oh, you scared the deaf ass Negroes can go sit down. This ain't your fight. Go ahead. Right. Because first of all, you have to be a brave heart. If you're a brave heart, Nas, right? Nasir means the light. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The brave hearts is the ones that's aware of the location of the Queen's Bridge. The Queen's Bridge is the bridge over the troubled waters. And the troubled waters is the Trail of Tears. You have to go back down the trail of tears, even if you use the ceremony in Muskogee Creek, right? In order to do what our people was being too scared to do, so you let the motherfucking imposters do it. Right. You let the ones they send to replace you do it because they the ones who sent to undermine you. So right. you turn about it being fair play, right? They all been placed on notice. Right? So let's go to the next slide. This right here is individuals feeding into the universal man. Right? This is a good depiction because we using, this is like you being a laptop. Mm -hmm. The internet is your link into the cloud right there. The brain that you see is the cloud. The land you see is your link in the individual is your phone or your laptop or your tablet, right? In order to tap into that you big brain as your primary thought source, you have to fill up your um, your uh, internal hard drive, mm -hmm. right? Which makes your short-term memory have to bypass the hard drive because it's full to get the right answer from the big brain up there. Mm -hmm. And this is where you get, if two or more come together in my, my, my name, I'm there also, it's talking about the universal mind. This is, that's a, a depiction. Next slide. 
Now, you got different groups of people thinking different stuff. This is what it looked like. So you got your religious conscious community, right? Agricore of a social group. You got your working people, your agricore of a company, right? Then you got your neighborhood, your agricore of the neighborhood. Every city got an aura over it. The aura can be seen as a gray of light when you're coming out of the darkness, coming up on the city. Right? Right? You look like a big dome of light over it. That's the egregore over the city. In order to clean them egregores up, right, you got to get them in harmony. Harmony is done through the synthesis of the different instruments. The different instruments is the different players at the top of the egregore chart. Uh -huh. All of them is what you call collecting the masters. Uh -huh. Right. Everybody in the music industry know that if you don't got the masters, you don't have anything. Right. Right. You at the mercy of the record company in the middle. You got the company. Right. But you trying to liberate the community by what you did in your social group as a form of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Now you have to bring them all together. This is why you have what you call conscious music. Right. And even sometimes what appears to be bass and vile music is still bringing your awareness to the egregores operation in order for you to know what need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next. Next slide. Well, I went over there. Mm hmm. Okay, so this is uh, JFK. I forgot why I sent you this one with this. It's like, there's a plot in this country to enslave every man, woman, and child. Before I leave this high and noble office, I plan to expose this plot. Seven days later, he was assassinated. Right? This is what we're talking about. Right? And so, the you can go to the next one. When you understand what he was talking about, that we was being enslaved, it makes sense. Now, this is the getting to the part where you learn how we become informed enough to take control of the collective unconscious and move the great egregore, the hundred monkey effect, is a phenomenon in which a new behavior or idea is spread rapidly by unexplained means. This is where uh, Albert Einstein calls spooky action at a distance. They can't explain it. From one group to all related groups, from one part of the egregore to all of the rest of them, regardless of geographical location, once a critical number is reached, don't give up. We call that critical mass. You know what we're saying all the time, we're trying to get the critical mass of awareness before everything happens. Now we had, we passed it now. We passed the event horizon, mm -hmm. right? So now Horus mm -hmm. is rising. We about to see the Aten, the known God expressed in the self out in the open, right? So the hundred monkey effect is getting them ones at the bottom to become active with the egregore because they the only ones that can rise all the way to the top. Because they were strong enough to hold mm -hmm. it up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right? Next slide. Now, this is another reference book that helps you with a deeper understanding of what egregores are. They use this science of the egregore to do conjure work, spell craft, mm -hmm. and what we call magic. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, you notice it say the occult entities that watch over human destiny, right? Mm -hmm. That because when you are not in physical form, you part of the universal egregore watching the ones in universe in physical form play out this game. We playing a universal chess game because we know we going to come back. Mm hmm. And by the changing and controlling of the egregores, meaning the thinking processes of the entities or the people, it gives the collective egregore 
the energy to drive us to a singularity in order for the reset. Mm -hmm. Next slide. I okay, that was, was that's from the other one. That's from the other class. Yeah, I think I think that was all yeah, of those. That's it, that's it. All right. Yeah, we had an hour or something. All right, yeah, okay, so at this point, yeah, hold on. At, we'll do a summary. So at this point, we should know that the individual wait, wait, wait. mind. You ready? So at this point, we should know that the individual yeah, mind feeds into the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind feeds into the universal mind. We should also be aware that two people creates another mind, two or more people as a mastermind group, right? And two or more people can program the mastermind that they create with the mastermind group by writing down in two dimensional reality the purpose of the egregore. When you write down the purpose of the egregore or the thought form, you are telling it what to do, how to do it, and where to go, who to get, and all of these things happen what seems like magically, right? Because the egregore you create go into the universal mind and make all the necessary connections to bring into reality the things that you are working on as a group, right? So Malachi told, sent me a message to do an open study group, how we will be doing in an esoteric Nuwabian class that's not open to the general public. This is right here is a metaphysical class that is above the heads of 98% of the people, right? But the few that's interested going to go to the references and go deeper into the understanding and that's going to raise their levels right so all of us being working together comes full circle with the public service announcement earlier right so once you understand that you can create your reality by how you think and you your thoughts should change how you feel you should feel like you already did the thing you're trying to accomplish. It's the only way you can convince yourself to accomplish it. Because now you know what it feel like. You know what you need to do to attain the feeling. We're trying to get to heaven on earth. <laughs> so um, let's go to Q&A so we can clear up some understandings because this was a real complex thing jammed into a short period. Yeah, yeah, hey, Ra, I got my first question for you while they get their questions geared up. Uh, yeah, so the collective minds, I think Baba referred to it as one, the mental reservoir, all that. So yeah. uh, the way people think around you, like if you got people around you and they think in a certain way different from you, now uh, is it a balance or is it – could that affect you or, uh, you know – like how does that it, it, it you can it can affect you depending on how strong your individual willpower is right and that's why when you look at leadership it seems like a leader is stubborn on can't nobody tell him shit that's called strong will right and it always come down to the will of the few versus the will of the many but you're going to have what we call leaders emerge organically. And those were the leaders they was trying to subdue. When the organic leader rise, you know, because tribes form around them naturally, according to nature. And that's how you can see a chief at an early age by watching children on the playground. He's going to be the Zeta, which means he's a loner. Or he's going to be the alpha, which means he's taking charge. Now, when it ain't no alphas out there and the Zeta ain't going to take charge, the betas will take charge, but it will be all kind of chaos on the playground. We know by looking at the children at an early age who the, who's who and what's what.
a question. Somebody said, uh, let me post this question. He says, uh, that was gonna ask you, you can pin them up as we go. Yeah, so it says, so I'm I'm uh, intelligent, or is so, it so am I intelligent, or is it common for everyone to understand what you explain? It's not common for everybody to understand what I explain. That means that you probably tapping into your God self already before you even seen this class. How can we find our tribe or how will we be contacted if we're the chosen ones? The point of contact will be different for different people. Some people will be contacted through their family. Some will be contacted by government means. Right. As far as finding your tribe, you live with them. And you have to go back to the family lines. You know who you related to. Mm -hmm. Them is your, your tribes, the ones that you related to that feel like you do. But then you got other tribes within your family that's going to try above separate. Y'all going to have a different allegiance to a different big mama, even if y'all love each other. Why do things enter my reality when I no longer desire them? Because once you burn off the desire, that's the per point of manifestation. You got to remember, you are desiring because you are in the process of determining something that you won't create it. As soon as you burn that energy off, you manifested what you're supposed to have desired. If a male gorilla sleeps with a monkey, does it create a baboon? No. They won't reproduce. Do you believe the current system gatekeepers all informed by locking it behind college? Oh, do you believe the current system gatekeepers all information? They keep they keeping the information back. Well, no, they used to use institutions to keep us from the information, right? So we send people in that don't look like us to get the information and put it in the public domain. Your Alistair Crowley's, your Mary Baker Eddy's, your Madame Blavatsky's, your uh, Franz Bardon's, because we were not allowed without getting murdered to even attempt to not on the Masonic halls for this information. So we sent people that they would accept in to put the information in the public. That's why I know Ali say, I put all of their secrets in the public domain. That's so that you will know there's people coming behind him, right? I mean, after 1929, that's going to be putting secrets in the open that if we pay attention, we'll be able to see the symbolism until we learn what the symbols mean. Just follow the symbolism. And then as you learn what the symbols mean, you can translate what's being said in your face behind your back. What do you think about Alcoholics Anonymous for indigenous people? Do you think it works? The whole Alcoholics Anonymous concept, the 12-step program is Egyptian in origin. And the native peoples have uh, varying medicine men designed, designed or trained to cure all addictions. Every addiction is curable. We have shamans around the world that specialize in each addiction because the addiction is most popular in the area. So what happens to mortgages and people that own when the corporation collapses, those people still continue to have their property? Okay, so we the fraud of the banks, right? The fraud of the banks that issued the mortgages, the mortgage mean a dead entity. So they was issuing those mortgage contracts under the pretext of fraud. The person who went to the bank to get the mortgage was the target of the fraud. 
in all contract law, when fraud is discovered, the person who committed the fraud lose all contractual rights to any emolument derived from the transaction because it's a criminal act and all proceeds from it is called fruit of the poison tree. So the person who took the mortgage out will have the claim to the land, not the bank. But it's going to be other remedies for people who have also lost in the past. Was it, what does it mean to have a light shadow? That's a new term to me. Uh, I can't answer that. I got to know. I got to see where you got it from and know who's talking yeah, in order to know. know. You know, like a, a light, a shadow is a form of light, really. It's like a lit, because they just dark, dark. It has, in order to get the shadow, it has to have a light, light, right? Yeah, you can't have a shadow when there is no light present. Darkness don't shine upon darkness. Okay. Here we go right here. What's the difference between paradigm and the egregore? The egregore is the thinker. The paradigm is what it do with the thought. Right. Right. So when you change your mind and your reality change from that, that's called changing your paradigm, a paradigm right. shift. Right. Okay. I think I broke a code. I'm just asking, is the Titanic, the boat, the ship really talking about lost city of Atlantis? Oh, uh, it's talking about our wealth the titanic was symbolism the unsinkable ship right was supposed to have been the wealth of the tribes over here meaning that our wealth was infinite we just didn't know it mm -hmm. even if it's at the bottom of the ocean or in the back of your man you still rich So what happens to mortgages? Okay. I had a dream. Okay, hello. Had a dream about some man who was telling me about Morse code and then the dream changed and we were somewhere at like a pyramid or some older building and I was rubbing the bottom of the foundation. Interesting. There's no question. Go to the next one. That dream was interesting, though. Why do family go against the black goat and anchoring restorer of the Mississippian bloodline? That right there, that's a bomb ass question. But I be, I've not answered this a million times. I even said it in this one. The strongest ones stay at the bottom the longest because they can take it. So the reason why the black goat, black sheep, black wolf, all exiles, Zetas, is because they first they're not going to just accept being part of a pack of sorry motherfuckers. They're just going to be looking at them like these motherfuckers. Then the next thing is because of that, the pack that they're dealing with, that they don't want to really, they, you know, you don't, you don't want to kill them. You don't want to destroy them. And you're looking at them with apathy. You apathetic to their plight because they are so lost. But this is going to create learning conditions for the black goat, black sheep, black wolf, etc. to develop in a way that helped the most in the family recover from the psychological trauma. So you're going to take all of the punishment as one of the ones we need to stand up later. Shit roll downhill and shit turn the fertilizer at the bottom. And the fertilizer fertilize the ones stuck there the longest to be the strongest when they finally grow. Talk about the movie Leave the World Behind produced by Obama. I have not seen it. I don't know nothing about it. I, I heard I heard a sister giving a narrative on it earlier, but I don't watch a lot of movies right now because of what I'm doing. 
most of my work is done in meditation. So most of the day, I don't even be physically present, I mean, mentally present with y'all. So it, only thing I watch is stuff I can cold flip immediately. Like I got an ongoing line through wrestling because I've been watching it so long. I can read the codes easy through wrestling than I can through new movies. But sometimes like this movie, people will refer me to it. So I'll go check it out. And some things I, I'll be able to instantly grasp and some things will occur to me later. So I can't really talk about much about the movie because my, you know, I don't, it hasn't moved my give a fuck meter yet. Are the monsters from the Cthulhu mythos real? They're not monsters, they thought forms. They was created by ancestors a long time ago. They thought forms. Cthulhu is the energy that they tell you was Lilith. And Lilith is one of the oldest matriarchal influences of the planet. What was the big hole in the sun all about? That was the uh, um, what we call a sun witch. The witch was riding the broom in the sun. Right? Yeah, yeah the return to CM Punk. That's a do the numbers for CM. That's 313. The P flips off the unk, which is the uncle. And P is the upside down six. I can go on and on with that stuff, so I try I don't want to get too deep into that. How do I control feeling other folks' feelings that keep me feeling down if I'm yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. So you need to learn psychic self-defense. Malachi told us about this a long time ago, um, but I had already uh, been studying it under some Eastern um, yoga doctrines. But psychic self-defense is learning how to turn your auric field into like an eggshell that blocks out all negative energy that you don't want. Right? So, um, there's people around the land. I don't know exactly where to send you now, but with the new audience broke up, but there is people that teach psychic self-defense and there's, um, books written on it as well. Um, I think one of the best authors I've ran across is, uh, Ruth Montgomery. Next one, Elder. I heard the spots on the moon is the actual shadow of Earth and how it really looked. Look, go to the movie theater. When they play in the movie, if you look back at the lens, you can see the movie playing through the lens of the projector. And then that ought to tell you something. Uh, wanted to add, say thank you, love, peace, and light all the time. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the people becoming aware of what we're trying to do. Who first agreed to the lines that divide the countries and names of the countries in ancient times, and how did they create map? The the, the what well, those are called lines of demarcation. They not ancient. The ancient maps, the territories was mapped by what we call geo formations, right? And this is why you got tribes lived on riverbanks and tribes lived in valleys under hills and tribes that lived on top of hills, right? Because this was the how we divided the land up. Lines of demarcation is probably a thousand years old, if that. But the name of the first person that done it is uh, not, it's not easy to locate. Yeah, we had, we had tribal lands and tribal areas based on different lands. Geographic yeah, we lines. use geo formations. That's why they, what we call America was never supposed to cross the Appalachian Mountains. Everything after that was acts of war. 
-hmm. And they've been here under acts of war. That's why they've been issuing warrants, ongoing declarations of war. Did Siberians also come from Russia to America and Russia controlled the West Coast? Russia never controlled the West Coast of the United States, but they did offer aid and assistance to the organic people of the land when we was fighting the, the French and the Spanish on the East and the West Coast. Okay. That was a good one. Are there beings living on the sun or sun beings in general? Look, Life is not restricted to what you perceive on earth. That's right. Right? Every planet got a different type of or species or creation type that's suitable for the habitat. Right? Fire beings inhabit the earth. I mean, the sun, you can see them walking on the sun sometimes. You know? And um, that's microscope, real high power microscopes to see that stuff. Mm -hmm. But life exists everywhere life is. There's nowhere where life isn't. So there's nowhere that life doesn't exist. All is within the realms of possibility because we live in the realm of infinite possibilities. If it's possible, nine out of ten is, is being done somewhere on a different timeline or the same timeline at a different point. Mm -hmm. What about white people leaving the United States and we got our land back and our wealth? Is that coming soon? White people ain't white. That's where the problem came in at. We was right. thinking all the time that pale faces, white skin is white people. They're not white people. And yeah, the motherfuckers got to go. The ones who look like us, that ain't us. I don't care where they go. They're not staying here. Right. Can you speak on what happened to the Virginia East Coast Indians throughout history? Have they been involved in any wars? They've been involved in the most wars. The most right. war, the most conflicts, when you look at the wars, we fought them all over the land. But the biggest concentration was the front that was put up from New York to Florida. And all of those tribes over there, the Lenape to the the Gullah Geechee to the uh, Shinnecock, all of them was involved in fighting these people. But we would have been so reduced in um, people with original blood that we wouldn't have been able to reclaim the land at the close of the age unless we adjusted to the conflict and evolved the warfare to a protracted struggle with conjure rules as opposed to physical combat rules. Because we wasn't going to never surrender and we wasn't going to never retreat. And they apparently wasn't going to stop coming until one side was totally annihilated. We'll take two more, then we'll, uh, we'll cut out. We'll take two more. Okay, what does it mean when I can look into the sky and I see tiny lights like sparklers everywhere being seen as you, know, you just got a broader spectrum of the light spectrum that you can see from the average person. Okay. Dynamic access memory is in computers. Does that have anything to do with humans when we dream? All of the computers is based off the functioning and understanding of the ancients of the human mind. The way that the human mind was descri described in ancient texts is what they use to develop the computer. So all aspects of the computer is based on your brain, your mental functioning. Short-term memory is RAM. Your long-term memory of the self that you learn in your lifetime, that's your hard drive. And then you overrun the hard drive, your long-term memory, you have to then draw from the cloud. The cloud is the universal mind or the universal egregore. Took us back to the beginning, Elder. <laughs> yeah. Hey, back, back to the beginning. I like I like this shit, though. I'm going to do more uh, investigation on it and get those books that you called out. 
because uh, I, I know Obama talked about the Arc egg, and you know I did a little bit of information in the Ascension Manual, but this is another like another little piece of it that that I was that I'm looking at another little yeah. the connection between all the Arc eggs connected together as one. This unit. was this is kind of um, it seemed like like for regular people what we was going over was kind of simplistic, but the concept. It was an esoteric concept that I got to try to figure out how to get people to understand it using the resources available so they can assimilate and utilize it to our greatest advantage. Mm -hmm. Right. So this wasn't easy for me to break down as it might seem because I had to try to make it so simple that it's almost impossible to explain it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. but we do got a lot like uh um the law of success is like this and when i was doing my uh i was drawing a curriculum for an entrepreneurial class mm -hmm. and this book is like one of the first books we start with this was the beginning of the class on entrepreneurial another one is called uh uh becoming an entrepreneur it's like mm -hmm. And that's what I was uh, writing that curriculum based off of. And then as I learned more, I went on to something else. Mm. Interesting. All right, well, Raw, I know you, but, hey, we like them hour and thirties because they like them hour and thirties. Them hour and thirties, it just be just like, a, just right. So Raw, mm -hmm. uh, we gonna come back with another one because uh, we, we, this is the time when we run them back to back. During Christmas time, we like to get them and um, get them going. So we'll be back with another one prior to the day after next, or uh, whenever the next time you're free with one, and uh, we'll talk about the next one. Hey, but you got anything yeah. you want to close out with, public service announcement, and then you want to tell the people, hey, y'all, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you want to show Rod some love on the Cash App, we got the Cash App in the links right there, right? Uh, right on the screen. Y'all, and, and uh, be sure to go follow Rod on Instagram. I'm, I'm going to add... I found a new way so I can add his link on that so you just click right on it instead of just having to do typing in. So I'm gonna add it to where you can just click right on it and then it goes straight to the Instagram. Because he be doing people's asking me how can they get into the lives when Rob be bringing people in. You gotta go go to his Instagram page, D Skype 8 on Instagram. We'll have that links in the description for you. Yeah, the Instagram is the sick eight. Um I haven't been doing much on the live on there because I was waiting on something that came today. Thanks to Dr. G, Reawake House of Reawakened Minds. She being a real connector, connecting the pieces that we needed. So when the three sisters sent me in, the three sisters are sending us out. We we closing it out with the three sister knot. And um it's, it's right now it's 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 on the verge. They're already announcing it. Oh, elder, based on what the public services are, I got a receipt that I can post it as a short later. Okay. I'm gonna send it to you. Yeah, I'm gonna clip that. I'm gonna clip that uh public service announcement and post it, try to post it tomorrow. And uh okay. I'm gonna do shorts from this tape. Like because right, right now I'm doing shorts from every tape, so I gotta catch up tomorrow. Uh I gotta do the one trail the trail of tears. I gotta cut at least seven shorts from it and then keep on going up till I get out to the tape that we just dropped now. So them shorts gonna be coming. Y'all finna see more shit on Instagram, more shit on TikTok. I'm finna crank. I'm gonna crank this shit up. I'm, I'm gonna go back and, and cut shorts from all them receipts for all to almost 150 tapes we already got out. So I gotta cut a lot of receipts. People don't know how many receipts I can make a million receipts off of the shit that me and Ross got out. <laughs> like, like I, 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 I just been cutting like the the, the number of ones people been asking about. But I'm gonna go back and start actually cutting some of these receipts to make them into shorts because a lot of that shit is like. Like people don't watch the whole three hours. We gotta taste this three hours, four hours. That's why I say we do an hour and thirty. Boom! Then we come back with another hour and thirty. That, that that way they you know they'll check it out. So uh, we're gonna be back, y'all. We, we we non stop action trying to take care of them babies. You know what I'm saying? So hey, yep. long let them. Are you wanna say something to close it out, Rob? Before we go out, I don't got nothing else to say. Hey, right, hey, assalamu alaikum, shalom alaikum, hotel, peace be unto you. You know what I'm saying? Divine love throughout the boundless universe to all. I should. To all my Zamars and to my tits. Peace. Wadu. Wadu.